And we know from our experience that the greatest demonstration of people's spirit and will is at times of calamity. People are called to service, to rescue others. A great terrible event happens in some part of the world and rescue crews are sent from nations everywhere. Money is sent, food is sent. This is where humanity shines. This is the front line of life, and it's also the front line of our spirituality. Otherwise, people retire to some kind of spiritual suburbia and only want to be happy and think of themselves. There's no life there. There's no inspiration there. So now life has brought us to this great threshold. How will we respond? People with a greater community history are sent into the world, people that I call greater community people, a greater community person, perhaps like you, <clears throat> to help support humanity through this tremendous challenge. And with this tremendous challenge, a tremendous upgrade to human power and unity in the world. But there's nothing that's going to unite humanity but some greater dilemma, challenge that threatens everyone everywhere. The rich have no benefit here. Everyone is in the same boat. No nation will prevail if intervention is successful. So, Many people will run away and hide or deny this. They're waiting for Jesus to come back or they're going to enlighten themselves in the pathway of Hinduism or Buddhism or they're going to become politically engaged. They cannot face this greater thing. But you must. If this strikes you, in ways you can hardly understand, then you're connected to this. Even the people who reject this are connected to this. But they want to deal with it on their terms, through their science or rationality, or their process of reasoning. But life is not about that. Human reason is magnificent in its areas of application. But beyond those areas, it is quite hopeless. You need a different kind of intelligence now. It's innate within you. And that is what our vigil is really about, is this deeper intelligence within you, which isn't there just to make you happy and comfortable, but to engage you in life in a way that really fulfills you, inspires you, gives you strength, gives you certainty, gets you out of self-degradation and self-conflict. It's you out of a meandering, haphazard life. It engages you where you really are meant to be engaged. You may pray for God to anything, any advantage, but God has put knowledge within you to guide you. You really cannot ask for more than that. It's enough, if you can respond to this. So I think the world needs to have this greater community awareness. Awareness, education, preparation. Or the world could be overtaken without firing a shot. The powers of persuasion and manipulation. Some people become hopeless immediately. Without hope, they become hopeless. <laughs> they go from exuberant and anticipatory to hopeless, like they fell out of a 10-story building. It's the middle ground. Hope is weak without knowledge. And hopelessness is defeat 
before the challenge even arrives. We cannot be defeated. This is not about capitulation. The intervention of the world seeks to weaken us. If we can't be seduced, it will weaken us. It will discourage us. Even though it's made up of pathetically small numbers of individuals, and it's a vast sea of humanity who doesn't realize the power that it has, strength that it has if it is united. Now it has a reason to unite <clears throat> beyond national advantage or the benefits of trade or anything that we can think of. It's the survival of human civilization. It's the survival of human freedom, sovereignty in this world. Big stakes. Big. So part of our message to you is what is big within you is connected to but is big with beyond you. You may give your life to little things, but what is big within you is connected to the bigger picture for which you have come. And when you can begin to have the courage, it's not easy, but have the courage to face this and consider this and stay with it, already you begin to turn a corner within yourself, a corner from weakness to strength, from hopelessness to a deeper certainty and conviction. I'm a messenger sent into the world to be a vehicle to bring this great teaching to humanity. And, you know, for the messengers before me, it always looks hopeless. Anything important to do always looks hopeless. But our strength comes not from hope alone, but from a deeper conviction. I can only point you to the revelation that will speak of all these things beyond what I can say. To answer your many questions, which will surely arrive, arise, which will strengthen you, give you courage, determination, acknowledging the fear and uncertainty that exists, yes, but to show you where your certainty really resides and how to find it, to take the steps to that deeper knowledge within you. This is how God will give you strength and courage. It's an invisible gift that serves us, even when we don't want it. Brilliant. Part of understanding who you are in the world today is part of a greater context within the world today. The great environmental change that is coming, the great ways of change our encounter with the universe of intelligent life, the growing urgency for human cooperation, the cessation of conflict. These are the big things, and they're all interrelated. Let yourself then be impacted by this. It is unsettling. You will not feel certain within it at the outset but it is necessary. It will take you away from little hopeless things and engage you with important, deeper things. And that is where your sense of worthiness and well-being will emerge. I pray for this in you and in the world. I'm here for this. This is not about me. This is about everyone. I pray this power and this feeling will begin to emerge in you.